Hi, everybody. Welcome to When Calls the Hallmarkies. This is the show where we talk all things When Calls the Heart, and we're nearing the finish line of season 11. We're talking about episodes eight and nine, and uh, we've got a couple more recaps left, but uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm film critic Grace Wagner. Mary's here. Hello. And how are you doing? Good. Excited to be back. I missed last week with you and yes. Caroline. So. Which those episodes were pretty intense for One Calls the Heart. We yeah. missed having you on for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I had to catch up. I was out of town. And then I was like, my seriously, first thing I was like, okay, everybody settled. Okay. I got to catch up on my show. <laughs> <laughs> but weren't you surprised? I mean, I had, yeah. they had like a Me Too episode and I was yeah. like, wow. Yes. Yes. Intense stuff. Yeah. Because when you think about it, um, and I heard somebody else say this. They're like, if you go from the beginning of the show till now, some of the main things are still out there. We don't know mm-hmm. who shot Lucas. Nathan hasn't really made a move on Elizabeth. Yes. And there was, <laughs> <laughs> and there was one more thing that was still hanging out there. Oh, the resort still hasn't been built. You know, those three main. Yeah. But I, when somebody pointed that out, I was like, oh, yeah, there's still been a lot of movement, a lot of character development, a lot of plots that have happened that I'd forgotten that those three big ones haven't quite been resolved. The biggest thing that actually surprises me, though, is I'm really surprised that we have not gotten a, an actual Hickam in May proposal scene because mm-hmm. I think it's pretty clear that they're going to be the big wedding that they keep talking about that they're going to yeah. have this season. And we're we're nearing the home stretch here. We've only got three episodes left after this. Yes, and you'd think there'd be a fair amount to to work with there for for episodes of yeah. differences and 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 families and his boss, yeah. the older sister or her family coming to town. Or, so yeah. unless it's going to be a quick quick let's elope kind of thing in one episode, they're running out of time to really yeah. flesh that out. Right, but you and know, don't I eat... know you love those wedding planning party planning, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe Fair. we won't get it. <laughs> so maybe it is good, but it, I it's just like maybe that was. I mean, we're not going to get the wedding or they'll do some kind of time yeah. jump right and it's just very weird yes because who else who else is there yeah there's so, nobody else yeah unless we get a vowel renewal for eight years with lee and rosie but that's not mm. you know I, I don't i mean yeah i don't know i don't know mm, yeah i guess that's possible but that seems you'd think they wait till 10 and i'd forgotten how long they were married but he mentioned it in this the once one of these episodes we're going to recap he said eight years together so that's my only other a lot of callbacks to older episodes with things like tom and you know with jeanette and with uh Mm -hmm. with uh, annie and different uh, and harrison different people coming back uh, Mm and that haven't been on the show for a while yeah yeah that's true wonder if there's a there's somebody that would come back yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know this this idea that there's a wedding coming and we don't really see the signs of it yet is interesting yeah yeah well let's talk about these episodes our first one is called brother's keeper and it's elizabeth and nathan help tom out of a tight situation the town comes together after a setback and joseph heals an old rift gowan counsels lucas yeah quite a bit going on yeah uh, gowan with this canceled one. a lot of people gowan canceled counseled um really joseph as well and lucas yeah yeah a lot went on in this episode (laughs) yeah i mean he's just he is kind of the town sage now (laughs) gallon i mean i mean i guess you know where does your pastor go you know and because he with that whole plot line and oh yeah and now he's is he is gallon pretty much on the payroll now for lucas it seems like he is it know, seems like it yeah staff yeah i don't think we ever got that scene him taking the job but it it seems like that happened yeah it's just kind of it there does. now yeah for the foil to edwin you know good cop that mm-hmm. shoulder angel devil angel devil like you know like you know anyway well and then so you uh you have the scene between tom and elizabeth and he says jack was right about me nothing but a screw up Aww. which was really sad because he yeah. was he's a he is a victim in all of this like mm-hmm. he was taken an advantage of two. Oh, exactly it, i mean at first i was like i got a little bit worried about him and then i thought no let me let me trust tom some more and then i thought the same thing he just got caught in the middle of this 
Yeah. With this J.B. Sweeney, you know, who uh-huh. ta- pretty much swindled him into being yeah. a bad guy and then absconded. And yeah, he's a victim, too. I wouldn't be surprised if he was out money as well. So, Oh, yeah, definitely. And and if you think about it, like, as, as easy as to get taken advantage of now, because you got there's, you know, so many ways to get violated without even giving your permission, you know. Mm -hmm. uh online and different things but at least now you have like so many different resources to and so many different avenues to kind of investigate people to kind of know try to know who you're getting involved with back then they didn't have anything i mean it was just a shake of the hand i mean how else would you know Mm -hmm. oh for sure and even if there had been something maybe written about him in a paper how would you know it would be yeah how would you know isolated to that other town in canada or wherever or maybe the u.s maybe this sweeney guy keeps going you know all over the place well i mean he was advertising a choir festival in salt lake city so he gets around (laughs) good town good city or maybe he'd never been there and he was like oh this far away place you know they'll never check you know it was funny that they picked salt lake of all I know. places <laughs> I, was I was like oh that's my city <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> but maybe because of the you know the tabernacle choir on temple square back then known as the mormon tabernacle choir uh-huh. maybe it was was a thing and so they thought oh choir choir so it makes sense yeah you know, that makes know. sense that's true i don't know maybe and i liked that they immediately want jacob to become a member of the choir we need another tenor <laughs> yes yes yeah. Never was there more a true statement. Every every <laughs> choir that has ever existed needs more tenors. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because it's just yeah. the truth. Everybody no, always needs more tenors. I know. My husband pointed out, he's like, oh, I bet he'll join the choir. But then he thought it'd be really sweet if there'd been a duet with um the brothers you know who by the way looked and sounded amazingly like brothers yeah they Their really voices did. were so similar i the, i was like good casting that's true what is the so let's see uh darren bell is his name yeah oh, d-o-r-o-n good. good casting even if he had to shave his head and grow the goatee to match or maybe he was art anyway but they're not just the looks but their voices were yeah they really did it's and, true yeah their yeah. accents or, yeah good job there because tom and jack don't really look like brothers but i bought no, it that's so. true yeah that's true i uh, i they did look a lot alike and so basically like the, the jacob was upset with him because when he got when when he got married he kind of dropped went away the, and yeah they Oh, they abandoned? spent more time with him being so mad at you know what you did that the quick explanation was almost too quick <laughs> i know i was kind of like what <laughs> it was that big that he he's like you married minnie and then we stopped singing together i think is what he said or we were stopped being together yeah and that was of, the impression that i got that that yeah. was um you know what you did you got married <laughs> i was like did he steal something or do something um what i I hope fatherhood had changed you and i stopped singing with you after i met minnie you felt abandoned yeah i guess that's it that he wasn't paying attention to his little brother anymore or or um did they even live in the same place i mean that just seems like a lot to give up your faith and family for It was, he was so mad at him. Oh, he says, and, and then he says, it's too late. It's too late now. And, and he says, uh, he says, God doesn't punch a clock. You used to believe oh, you yeah. can again. Oh, I kind of love that line. God doesn't punch mm-hmm. a clock. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. 
We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. I loved, so, I loved Henry's advice about, um, look, you, it doesn't matter what it was. You, you hurt him and you want to make it amends. So let's just do it. You know, just go ahead. That's true. So, that really was good advice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and but I guess in a way it is kind of realistic because how often do we hold grudges and we can barely remember, uh, know. you know, what it all was about, and yet we, yeah, I don't know, that, maybe that's not we, we, too crazy actually. Yeah, maybe we can forgive in hopes of being forgiven for something we honestly had no idea might have hurt somebody so badly. Yeah. It's like, oh, I had, I'm so sorry. So yeah, if we can forgive easily, hopefully mm-hmm. we'll get forgiven easily. No. So we have Goldie is the social butterfly of Hope <laughs> Valley. That was so cute. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Yeah. Goodness. And uh, and there's this back and forth. Bill and Rosemary are interviewing uh, Pike. Uh, we get yes. we get to meet Pike, and I yeah. was a big fan of this actor. Me Pike. too. Yes. <laughs> I, I, from the beginning, when they pull him out of the car and like do like the little perp walk up the stairs and everything in his eyes, I was like, yeah. who is this? This is, this is very good. <laughs> yeah. Very talented and very attractive. <laughs> they did a great job. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, <laughs> Georgie De- DeBaris is his name. Oh. Georgie DeBaris. Yeah. I just liked him a lot. I thought he got a lot yeah. of charisma. I thought that he was like did a really good job of kind of playing this wounded oh yeah guy well, and basically like he he's so scared of what this guy will do. Yes. It he uh he he, he won't, won't speak like he won't no, he, he won't, won't say anything cuz he's like they, they can find me. What did he say? You have no idea. You can find me anywhere. Like, I cannot say anything. He was worried. Yeah. So now I'm really intrigued as to who's yeah. the shooter, who was behind it. Well, I was really thinking that this is, is I, I was really feeling that this really is Edwin when we get the, uh, the next episode with Montague. But mm-hmm. then Caroline pointed out that one of the writers was on another podcast where she was saying that it's not somebody that we've met this season that's been on the show this season they haven't they haven't been on screen yet this season yeah yeah yeah. which i think is so so lame i think that's so dumb i mean it's gonna be somebody coming in from you know left field that we have had no investment in no you know like i just think that's so dumb like when i I make it somebody that we've like had a story about that we care about yeah random stranger or somebody we've met once and we forgot who it was yeah. in a previous episode like in the like like this um who i forgot about amos dixon was a name yeah. thrown out there that's that, what um, caroline suggested yeah and i you know i i'm just like whatever i edwin would have been much more satisfying for it to be a mole <laughs> for somebody that you know has been kind of there and it would make sense because he would have been the only one that would have had access to both lucas and and Montague. Yes, exactly. And and to have him there the whole time. I mean, it's your classic like twist and yeah. you know, Al- in like Albert Hitchcock or um like I said, uh, every Agatha season Christie. of 24, they always had a mole. Almost there was always yeah. somebody in the uh whatever they called that you know, CIA, you know, whatever. Yeah. On yeah. that on 24. There was always somebody who was like secretly the mole. <laughs> it's a double <laughs> agent or yeah. yeah so I mean, because Edwin. Yeah, I'm so confused by him. You know, know. he was the it, because we talked about this how last season he was just some tourist, and then all of a sudden he's working for the government, and he's married. He's wearing a wedding ring. Who, who's his family? Where are they? He lives in the Queen of Hearts now in in Hope Valley because they never in Capital City. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm just like, what does he know, and why is he pushing Lucas, Governor Bouchard, certain ways unless he's got some other motive? You know. 
Yeah. But maybe he knows. And I keep thinking he's got to know more about the shooter. If he's not the shooter, he's got to know more about it. And for them to not push Clayton Pike anymore. And for the Mounties to not have been able to get it out of him in all these months. Is yeah. Just... If the only thing they have is the confession, like that is weak sauce. Yeah. I mean, that is yeah. just that if you have a, an attorney of any kind of skill, that thing could be gone. Yeah. You need evidence. Quickly. Quickly. Yep. You need more evidence than a confession. Yeah. No. Yeah. Even back then, even in fake Canada, you need more. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but uh, Lee is is talking to Maisie and she says, this resort will be a total disaster. She's very upset about it. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's interesting. She's also upset about the whole thing with Tom. She's like a mm-hmm. man to get the money back. And yeah. I mean, I would think that they would at least be like, we'll give you a little bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, it came together pretty quickly. And the other thing I thought was yeah. they, they were so worried about, oh, my goodness, five dollars each. That's going to that's a lot of money. We have to come up with that. And then they're able to fundraise in one day, like a ton of money. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, let's see how much. So $300 in 1913. 1920. Or they said it was the 1920s. Oh, 1920. Yeah, this is ish. Didn't, didn't they say that in either the episode nine or episode eight? They're like, it's the 20s, you know? And I was like, eh, an alternative 20s. Yeah, so $300 mm-hmm. is forty is forty seven hundred dollars now. So it is, a, it is a lot of money. From farmers and, yeah, to... Yeah. to pull together unless this valley voices of the valley festival brought in people from benson hills from jameson from you know these other towns and they also came and raised money because yeah the the choir folks were like oh we don't have yeah i mean it's definitely a good chunk of change i don't think it's enough to like ruin literally ruin someone's life over That's like true. they were wanting she was wanting him to like go to prison for she was. stuff like that you know char and feather and run him out on the rail yeah. and yeah, she was tech. But, but yeah, they're able angry. to they're able to earn I think two hundred dollars or just over That's right. two hundred dollars. And then the, the governor Edwin and the governor Bouchard say we'll put in the rest from the wasn't it the governor's culture uh, fund culture Art fund cult- yeah 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 make up and, the and so that all works out it all works out. Um, you also see Allie playing the guitar, which I feel like have we seen her play the guitar before? She was, I feel like she was kind of practicing a little bit on like a porch step at one I point. Um, or maybe I'm thinking of the same episode. I thought I saw her in a previous episode. I don't episode remember her ever playing the bit. guitar, but it's been a while if, if I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, no, that was really sweet. It was sweet. Um, and, uh, and then Nathan playing the guitar, which mm-hmm. we haven't gotten a lot of. We could use a lot more. Um, yeah. That's swoony. So when I was at BYU, like if there was a boy who played the guitar, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. like. No Everybody question. would just gather around. Like the boys yeah. play that up. My teenagers are learning to play because they know it draws in <laughs> picks. So if I were Nathan, I would yeah. I would play that up. So uh, one of my He's friends, busy. one of my friends uh, for the preference dance at BYU, uh, her boyfriend or boy, she was interested in whatever, uh, stood outside her window playing for the longest time, Billy Joel. <laughs> You know, uh, on his guitar. <laughs> or I guess it wasn't preference. It was homecoming, whatever, because that's girl stress. Yeah. But um, yeah. for one of those dances, he stood outside and we were all like, oh. <laughs> that was a big one to play. Another yeah. one was Tears in Heaven. You, you just, but the boy would just, yeah. Like, would you know my name? But that's and a sad like, oh. song, though. <laughs> but sweet. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's had his heart broken. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, yeah Nathan, it, it, Nathan should play that up and get some get some interest. I think Elizabeth mm-hmm. would love that. Definitely. And, well, and and so her and little Jack hear it and and they he want little Jack wants to go over there and uh he says, No, let's give him some privacy. Yeah. Uh, and uh so that was very sweet. That and was. and then I we have this uh we have this conversation between joseph and gowan like you said 
maybe you are the answer to my prayers is what Joseph says to Gal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, what? No. He's like, not me. And we, oh, I love that. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and he says, you know more about forgiving and being forgiven than anyone else I know. And oh yeah, and, and then he says, if you regret hurting him, what does it matter why or how your family? It's true. Very yeah, true. that's great advice. That was that was really good when you you're trying to heal that rift and and sometimes family members might say, you know, no, I'm I'm I got a boundary or I'm done, but it's still a, yeah. to always keep that open kind of you know relationship i i love yeah. seeing that play out here for the campfields yeah me too and um, so then we get the scene between lucas and pike and he oh, says yes. if i tell you i'm a dead man and if i and oh if my you don't am i that was a good moment that was good that was good. such a good moment when he just like <laughs> stomps on in he doesn't need a cane anymore because he's you know he's, <laughs> he's just like out you know he tells the mounties like Oof, vamos. Yeah. Well, I, what does he say? I need a moment. And they're like, just like really, really fast. And then he just, the eyes, the eye contact, just staring at him. Uh-huh. Good scene. Very good scene. <laughs> yeah, this is really good. And uh, and then we have the voice of the valley and we get Ned and Florence singing Daisy. And Cute. this is like uh, like a, the second or third time they've sung that song this season. And I just always laugh because have you seen 2001 A Space Odyssey? Oh, it's been years, yeah. but is that Kubrick. in that? Yes. So at the end, when he's finally turning off Hal, at the end, uh, Hal starts singing Daisy, <gasps> and, and it gets slower <laughs> and slower and slower. Daisy, Daisy, on a bicycle made for two. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I get, like, creepy vibes. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. That's so funny. No, I think You're of the time that my, uh, that my sister and her husband rented a tandem bike and they were like, we thought we'd be singing that song and pedaling together. It was a nightmare. They were like, <laughs> right, left. No, you're right. No, my left. And it was like, a night. they were like panting and sweating and they're like, we can't. This is ridiculous. A test on their marriage. <laughs> yeah. It was- newlyweds on the they thought they'd be like yay bicycle built for two instead it was like (laughs) just a struggle yeah to get it like coordinated to like start the darn thing and (laughs) anyway but though that is that that was a cute little duet um yeah it was was fun and it was them singing don't you think it sure sounded like their voices i think so yeah it was them singing yeah Yeah. and uh, and so then we have tom tent selling elizabeth uh that or tom telling nathan again so then we have tom saying nathan you and jack are a lot like each other so you and Mm -hmm. elizabeth i'm glad she has someone like you in her life yeah so that was cute yeah it was cute um i i i know (laughs) that all of our team nathan fans were like there's one more (laughs) drop in the bucket did you see that that (laughs) aaron posted the slaw picture yeah today <laughs> i mean it's just kind of like at a certain uh, point it just makes me feel like there's something wrong with nathan like well, I come know, on. Though, oh my she, gosh she yeah i feel like singing like sebastian the crab come on and kiss yeah. the girl. whoa whoa yeah. like he he That's he's true. it's very 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 slow very slow she even told you, like, I don't look at somebody that yeah. way. That's just a friend. Like, what are you waiting for? That's like, your invitation. Be, it yeah. would be one thing if in the world of this show, in the world of fake Canada, if they followed the strict courtship rules of this yes. time. But they don't. Yes. I mean, Lucas and Elizabeth were all over each other. So what is going on? <laughs> like, why? I don't, I don't know. Is there something I don't wrong know. with Nathan? I know. Is it going to be this huge, like, so proper twist? Like, I, you know, I have no heart. I don't know. I can't love. <laughs> like, what? It's happening. I it's have no blood in my crazy. veins. <laughs> it's uh... she's giving him the go ahead. You know, dead <laughs> dead husband's brother is giving him the go ahead. Lucas gave him the go ahead. Rosie what? was probably like push him on her. Like, come what? on. What more so. could they possibly be with? I don't know. 
Her parents are still alive. Yeah, she wants to meet her parents. Um, Lee and Rosemary dancing. Cute, cute. And uh, and then Tom and Elizabeth. Thanks for believing in me. So that mm-hmm. was nice. That was cute. And yeah, then I know. Yeah, and then we have this scene between Lucas and Montague. And uh, and he says that you know, this is all to avoid taking Jeanette's bid. Yeah. It does seem very unlikely. Yeah. For a businessman like like uh Lucas that he would rather work with Montague. Yeah, the the Jeanette o- or Quan somebody- or O'Coin. <laughs> yeah, but this is somebody that like- he at least has some understanding of kind of yeah and who they are and, and their moral framework and what they are likely to do and you know like it doesn't yeah. make any sense well and the way that they're pushing for this resort so much and edwin's pushing for it we have to do it we have to have to and, and if that means working with montague we got to do it like do we do it? yeah like if it's if you're having such a hard time getting an investor then maybe, maybe it's not a good not- investment exactly exactly yeah maybe this isn't the thing you should be pushing for you know i Mm -hmm. I always get skeptical of governments telling you that this is necessary is it though yeah so that's good good to do (laughs) yes um and then then we find out benson hills is filing benson hills oil filing for bankruptcy yeah so things are just spiraling i know i mean this is kind of the ways that the old small towns used to just kind of dry up I mean, they're trying to keep it going, but each each of these towns has these crises, you know. Yeah. Last last season, it was the water, and now it's the, you know, all these things. So then, Faith and Tom dance, and again, another reason to keep them around. Like that's it would be a cute match. It would be really cute. He knows here they've got some history. Um, they're the right height for each other. Yes, they are. I was just gonna say that they're about the same height. <laughs> You thought the same thing. <laughs> because because Andrea has struggled with chemistry with a lot of her male co-stars. And I feel like some chemistry here. Like this. I did too. Yes. Um, I mean, he's he's great. You know, his eyes just sparkle and he's looking at her and he's like interested yeah. in her. And she's a sweetheart. Yeah. We I would I would totally what's the word would be great. Say, I would ship them. There you Yes. Is. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have Elizabeth and Nathan dancing. Uh, at the end so that's yeah. this episode uh this was fun enough episode i'd probably give it like a seven and a half yeah uh, yeah i think i'm at a seven and a half because the next one i rated higher um mm-hmm. but this it was fun enough you know yeah. some different things happened we had the the festival yeah yeah we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's susan mallory's new book for the love of summer Ready for a story that hits you right in the feels and makes you believe in the power of friendship and resilience? Check out New York Times bestselling author Susan Mallory's For the Love of Summer. Experience Allison's roller coaster ride of life, grappling with financial troubles and emotional highs and lows, and finding unexpected allies. Unravel the intricacies of family ties, the solace of true friendship, and the unwavering spirit that propels us forward. Grab your copy of For the Love of Summer at your favorite bookstore or use the affiliate link below and discover a story that will leave you asking, what would you do? That's For the Love of Summer, available today wherever you purchase your books. Of Truth Be Told, episode nine, and it's Rosemary's newspaper article creates waves when she questions Lucas's judgment. Allie discusses her birth father with Nathan, and Elizabeth realizes little Jack is growing up. So you liked Mm -hmm. this episode better. I think so. Um, Though our big three things are still not any closer to being fixed. Yeah. (laughs) Now that I think about it. But when I watch it, I'm like, oh, a lot's happening here, you know? Yeah. And and Elizabeth says, what's holding you back? I just want to take our time. Why? (laughs) You know, like, you're losing daylight here. Like, what's for i mean i know clocks are ticking you know you could be happy yeah. i don't know do you want, I don't uh, know. Do you want a little jack to be grown up by the time what is what is going on like, yeah i mean there's you might see that excuse in books or movies you know like well i need to get my children settled he's how old like he's just little still yeah. so there's he can he needs a father in his life and i thought it was going to be buddy I'm gonna let that right. go. He called Lucas buddy. He right. calls him Mountie Nathan, right? He yeah, I think he calls. Yeah, he Nathan, does. Mountie Nathan, Mountie Nathan, which is cute. 
And so, yeah, yeah but but I, I guess it is true to Elizabeth's character. She was so slow with Jack. Yes. So, yeah. Well, whatever. Caution, you know. Yeah. That is not my personality. I'll tell you but that right now. I know, right? And she's not being slow or cautious this time. It's Nathan. She's giving him all the signs. Like mm-hmm. she looks at his lips, you know, she tells him, do friends look at each other like this? Yeah. Did she ask him to dance in episode eight? She did, didn't she? Do you want to dance? I think asked she asked who. him. I can't remember. Who yeah. Asked who, but, uh, and then she asks him on a picnic, doesn't she? In this one? Mm-hmm. I feel like, but then they yeah, didn't have the, it. The elusive uh, Nathan Elizabeth date. picnic is the date. It's never, yeah. Is, 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 is continued to remain elusive. <laughs> Because, yeah, I feel like she kind of hinted or got an invitation for a picnic, and then I yes. haven't seen it yet. And then I got excited, so. and I'm like, oh, they're actually going to go on a date. This is very exciting. But no. And then it has not happened. Because of Allie. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. They have not shared a meal together. <laughs> oh, maybe <laughs> some season 11. It's juice insane. on the porch, but yeah. Yeah, yeah they've so had like a little bit of <laughs> juice on the coffee porch. or something. <laughs> but yeah. Then Allie so, has to have teenage angst. And- <laughs> we get this whole plot about Allie's father. Yes. Uh, um, so, Dylan. Dylan something. Dylan. And yeah. Allie overhears him talking about him. She's interested in meeting her father. And it's like, you don't want me to know anything about him. It turns out Dylan is in prison. Yeah. And, and I think... I think that... Certainly, by the time you're, somebody's Allie's age, they are mature enough to understand that somebody can be in prison and do something bad. Yeah. But, you know, that doesn't mean they're like it's horrible not people fault. who you should yes. be ashamed of or something like that. Yes. I mean, it depends on, I guess, what they did. But, but yeah. you know, I don't know. We're all complex humans. <laughs> yes, I, I think it's there's a problem here that he hasn't been as communicative com- open with her about the whole situation. And now he's like, well, now what do I say? You know? Yeah. Cause this is a kind of a big deal. Like I can see, and I don't think there's anything wrong with Allie visiting her father in prison. No, I mean, you know, I mean, it's all regulated where... and, and watched over and you could be there with him, with her. I and... know. Yeah. Um, that happens all the time around. I mean, her... I, in fact, we're commanded yeah. in the Bible to, to visit people in prison. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, and, and um, the, his crime didn't involve her. So if there was some protective oh, issues, yeah. of course. But right. he, this is, ex, I think it was extortion or money theft. laundry. Or, oh, that. Yeah, she should. I, I'm supportive yeah. of go at, Nathan's her guardian. Yeah, it, it would be one thing if it was like a sexual crime yeah, or something like that yeah, he's out of her life you know that's it but yeah. for her i think yeah i would be supportive. a non-violent crime have, yeah i gone to see him in prison um, and even even if it was a violent crime she's she's been practically an adult like i would still think is. that with a monitored closely monitored visit would still mm-hmm. be fine like yeah people visit people in prison all the time like i know this is this is her father and yes yeah. nathan has practically raised her loves her and she loves him of course but um but i'm yeah i think for and i think she just needs to get yeah. some of this these answers it does seem and, weird at the very least that she wouldn't have already known about this yes yes that this wouldn't have been part of her story or something yeah. she understood, you know, right. like, Oh yeah, this is what his situation. And so it, it did feel a little out of thin air that all of a sudden we have this, ah, you know, <laughs> crisis about right. it that yeah, she hadn't slowly built up to. Mm-hmm. You know? So then Angela kind of tells her, well, maybe you should try to find your dad. Yeah. You helped us find our uncle. You're pretty sleuthy. <laughs> yeah. And this basically is, I wanted... she just uses the telephone. <laughs> yeah and he's that's when she finds out that he's in prison and she still wants to meet him and then we get on our ending is Allie calls the prison makes a request to see Dylan Parks yeah uh, on the phone so it was very slick of her oh yeah oh yeah I was like whoa they just (laughs) that was easy (laughs) yeah (laughs) a little too Um, easy 
Another plot that we have in this episode is Faith and Lily. Oh my goodness. <sighs> They're so cute. Oh, she's the best little actress. I had yeah. the best day, Auntie Faith, because they uh, got their hair curled in the salon. Uh, they had food together. Yeah, and, they're getting their their hair set. Yes, and, yes. And both my my grandmas were both from very different economic class spheres, but both of them got their hair set every like two weeks, mm-hmm. maybe. Three. Yeah, go both and get it all. They done. both had yeah. their my grandma. My grandma Wagner would vacation with her hairstylist, like they were friends. <laughs> they were each other. <laughs> yeah because you you really get to that was a thing that for a chair for hours yeah <laughs> yeah well uh, I, I was just saying I was, like when do you get the age where you chop off all your hair and get it get permanence every two weeks because be- i know is it when is that because uh, <laughs> and what is the alternative now like <laughs> i want to i have long hair and i'm like how long do i keep it like what age do women do that is that yeah. still in our future? You know, I don't I don't want to do it yet. It seems, yeah. it seems like a grandma thing to do. So yeah. It was really cute for Faith and oh, Lily getting their hair set. Oh, they're they they're just so darling together. And then for her to get the phone call that Dora is it Dora Watson, Mrs. Watson mm-hmm. is gonna come back. Coming back. It really was just like <sighs> my and cute I, Lily. I like who would, I think it was Joseph, somebody I forget who said, uh, now, now Lily's just going to have one more person to love her. That's true. Which is very that, true and very sweet. Yeah. As long as she stays close by, she can have her know. life. You know, if she moves away, then letters, I guess. There's I'm no hoping baseline. that she's popular enough that <laughs> she's going to be a permanent. <laughs> oh, Hallmark, please listen to us. She's darling. She's so sweet. I love those storylines with her and Faith. Yeah. We want something in Faith's life because she's lonely. She that was at the beginning of the season how she was, you know. Lonely, yeah, is, you're right. This has filled this void in her life, you know, and um, and if you're not going to keep Tom around for them to get married, then let's figure something out for Faith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I I admire the heck out of people who do foster care and oh yeah i i think that would be so hard open your heart in your home and then for temporary situation yeah but that i I know they just look at it as i mean i've talked to jen lily about this uh, a bunch and you you just you you love them while you have the chance you don't withhold it and uh that's that's a, a really good person, I think, to be able to do yeah. that. I admire it very I, much. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. To be one more person in their life, mm-hmm. to get that love. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so then we have uh, we have Montague showing up. Hickam doesn't want to rent him a room in the inn. And uh, <laughs> a lot has happened since you tried to steal our water. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hickam was so funny. He moves the book from the counter. Yeah. He's like in a room and he's like uh, what about all those keys fine <laughs> and edwin was acting really suspicious he was real friendly with montague right what is going on there i we're gonna find something out at the end and you and i are gonna be like we knew it yeah and Edwin, edwin's yeah. just i don't get it well especially because he keeps being like just pushing Lucas one way, and Henry's like, I don't think so, on the other side. Right. And then Mon- Montague just, oh, he's such a good bad man of business, that actor. Just He mm, is. Mm, mm, ben Wilkinson. He is yeah. the best at, at, the, at a bad man of business. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, he's like, when I'm talking about my money, I like to look in a man's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> when money is involved, I like to look a man in the eye. He wants to be the majority oh. owner. And I, mm-hmm. I wrote down, aren't there any other rich people in this in this area <laughs> like, all right it's, there's really it's, only the only rich people are lee gallon <laughs> and montague and montague yeah what happened to season two with all of elizabeth's like father's rich friends and charles <laughs> you know where's charles i mean i guess there's not a lot of men period in hope valley i mean it's That's mostly true. women but still i mean right to somebody they like, come on out you could you could be the big man of town you know? yeah you're really good there's an opportunity here come west young man you know as yeah. boys say. that's true 
It's true. <laughs> Talking to Ali, just don't shut your dad out. He only wants the best for you. Yep. Um, we also have an adorable scene where Lily is, is uh, asked Minnie for a cupcake. <laughs> that, was oh, really cute. that was really cute. It's like, <laughs> I'll get you on this frosted. I mean, we're right there at our eye level on oh. the table. She's like trying to get one. She that is so I would give cute. her anything. I'd yeah, just, I would too. <laughs> I would just spoil her, her rotten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so then, uh, let's see here. Um, Bill knocks on the door. And says, I'm fa- I'm failing as a godfather. And he gives Jack a, a pony. pony. <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh, yes. Because this follows that theme of Elizabeth trying to figure out what she wants to do for Jack. And Nathan trying to figure out what to do for Allie. And each kind of giving cross advice, but then trying not to overstep their bounds. Like, she's kind of talking to Allie. And Nathan thinks, wait, did you tell Allie this? No, I, I wouldn't undermine you. And then over here we have. Yeah, he should totally ride a horse. Uh, not yet. Sergeant's huge. I mean, he shouldn't ride a horse. So there's that back and forth between that parallel of them and and trying to weigh in on their decision making is in their parenthood, but then not. And so, but meanwhile, we've got Bill, who's just so excited to have this little yeah. godson. And I mean, yeah, he's a boy. He needs a horse. (laughs) As a uh, a horse expert, after watching 17 seasons of Heartland, I can (laughs) say that I think the Jack Junior is definitely old enough to ride to ride a a horse. A horse. Like I know that Lindy was riding a horse on Heartland sooner than than this. She was little, little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He could ride it, and (laughs) he could ride it on his own. He doesn't need Bill behind him. He but it was really him. funny, like <laughs> that yes. horse. And I guess the the the, the pony is going to be just at the at the um the, cor- the stable. Stables, yeah, where Sergeant is. <laughs> yeah, because he funny. brings him this pony to learn to ride, but he's just like a big dog. <laughs> like it was a different pony you can ride. Yeah, legs would drag. Really <laughs> <laughs> so then we have the scene with Bill with him in front of him with this little helmet. And he's like, pull this way, pull that way. Yeah. And I just thought, yeah, he should have been on a he should have been on a horse before then. <laughs> um, I mean, because Jack wasn't killed in a horse racing, so there's no like worry there for her. Yeah. He should have been on, yeah. He should have been on a horse before. Yeah. Maybe not Sarge, because he's big, but anyway. Because you needed to in that day and age. You needed to yeah, know. Yeah, you to, had to learn how to like, ride. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was yeah. really funny. I thought him bringing that pony. That was really yeah, good. Was- he was so excited like his face he's like okay i got something (laughs) well i'm really curious to hear your perspective on this whole rosemary situation because so there's everything's happening with this deal with montague and rosemary finds out about it and she and bunch she knows that people are going to be upset about it and uh, so she has this dilemma of does she write about it or does she not write about it lucas says please don't write about it um, what do you think as a journalist? I'm curious. Yeah. So I was thinking back to my time, all my years um, in local media. And now, thankfully, with the church news, I don't run into any of this with politicians. <laughs> but I've had politicians yell at me before. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, what are you doing? And I'm like, you're a public figure. And this is, this is, you know what I mean? So I'm kind yeah. of on her side here where this is something that actually people whose money is involved, whose livelihoods are at stake, they deserve to know what's happening. Yeah. This we have, and I don't know about Canada, but in America we have like freedom of the press. Yes. But we also have what are called like sunshine laws where things need to be out in the open and transparent. Um, otherwise, how can you trust, you know, or yeah. how can you, you know, so I'm on her side, even though I did feel bad for how it went down. Like Lucas was furious because yeah. there's also some things that are confidential as they're trying to be worked through. But in this case, I was on her side. So yeah, I was too. I think that she, uh, she, that's her duty as, uh, as seemingly the only reporter in Hope Valley. Yes. There's yeah. nobody else who is going to report maybe the Benson Hill beetle. I don't know, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. nobody who's going to report this and it's her mm-hmm. obligation as as a journalist, you know, and she shouldn't be giving like favors to her friends just no. because she knows Lucas doesn't mean that he, he gets should a, get a free pass. even <laughs> even he's though there are no official. governors in Canada. Yeah. He's the governor. Like, yeah, he's an elected I mean, official by the people. He is and, yeah, he's an and, official, and, and so he has to be 
treated, it, it would be wrong for her to be like, that's all right. I'll keep quiet. Yeah. Because yeah I won't let like, Yes. Keep, keep doing it. You know, now, now if you have, yeah, yeah, we have, it's the, the whole idea of having a, an open and transparent situation it did obviously, you know, might have killed the deal and everything. And that's what he was mad about. But you just you just need to know these things so you can go forward having all the facts. Yeah. And and if she didn't like, write about you, it. Can you imagine if, you, you know, when they were doing that whole um, building up of the of like ZCMI in that whole area, you mm-hmm. know, and it was like government slash private you know, it was a combined thing, right? So similar mm-hmm. to this situation. Yeah. Um, if if somebody from the Desert News was like, I'll give you some time. I'm not going to report it <laughs> because I know yeah. you, you're my friend. Like, yeah, no, Ooh, that, that would be, be horrible. horrible. You wouldn't keep your job for one oh, thing no, you as a wouldn't. reporter. Yeah. yeah. And I've had, I've had politicians mad at me for asking questions. And I thankfully have had my bosses back me up. But one, one time I didn't. And I just thought, what are we doing here? You know, yeah. other now I'm not a fan of gotcha journalism where it's like, you're just trying to weasel and find any sort of controversy. That's not what happened here for her. Right. She was like, I think the people need to know this yeah. is a man who tried to like sabotage our town. Yeah. He's trying to take our again. water. Yeah. I think they just need to know that he's involved again. And so we have all the facts and Lee, what a man. Oh my goodness. He stood up for his wife, yeah. not only for, for his wife, good. but also his call. I mean, yeah. The, for the paper and for the press to his really it was good, a good friend moment. Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That was, that was a good moment. And, uh, and so Lucas says to Montague, I'm confident we can ride out the storm. And, uh, and uh, Montague says, no, I don't think it's a good idea. And, yeah. uh, and then he is attacked and he ends up yes. with a concussion. And, Gosh. uh, um, and then he says, Montague wouldn't be here, wouldn't be injured, wouldn't be if it wasn't for the article. Um, that seems can't. unlikely that I think that whoever attacked him. It's already there. Yeah. Like, I think it's the same person who attacked Lucas. And uh, so I don't think like I, I would imagine that the person who attacked Montague already knew all this information it's not like he's like we're looking in the paper click click oh my gosh Aha, i had no I'm idea bad. like yeah <laughs> no I'm yeah attack him like i it's, i highly doubt i agree that was you know what happened yeah something is part of this bigger we don't know yet picture yeah but man jeanette must be really shady i mean I it just seems hard to believe that that if truly she is the only other option that he would rather work with this guy who stole their water, who has been so shady all along, like what, like how bad can this woman be? I know something, something's, something's like, not what? right there. What, what is it? You know, is it what? just, is it, what are the writers like, thinking? In the Will world of when calls of the heart, Montague was like, the worst person I think we've ever been introduced to <laughs> in this bad. world. Yes. Maybe that Harrison and- guy was even worse, but um, <laughs> this guy is bad news. He's terrible. So like, yeah. how can she possibly be worse? Like it's so, I am just, I'm so confused. I know I'm baffled. They better yeah. let us know. Really or am. it's just going to be like, Oh, is, then I'm just going to have to think what is that Lucas just doing? doesn't want to work with her because of their past romantic history. Cause that's yeah. not, that's a thin, a thin excuse. And so, then he um, says, well, Jeanette has always despised violence. So he thinks that she is not the one who injured Montague. So I guess at least he's willing to give her that. Yeah. So does he mean like violence that she commits or that she would on behalf of her? Like, because that was a guy that shoved him to the ground. So yeah, mm-hmm. so that's not her MO is violent kind of attacks or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. at least he's willing to give her that, which is not the tr- case for Montague. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I know. like he's had people, wasn't he the one that had like the the thugs come in? Yes. Um oh yeah, with the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That were like that out were, like, there attacking. With, mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> so is it one of his own people that yeah, that just he probably has a lot of enemies, you know, and they might've followed him there. Yeah. And so then Allie makes the call and, yeah. and that's, that's it. And I just so shocked that, like I said, that we have gotten nothing in these two episodes from Hickam and May, like nothing. Yeah. 
nothing moved forward for the them. The wedding is happening in three episodes. Like it's so weird to me. Yeah, they we didn't see anything between them. Um, but I can remember. Did they dance no. together in the background? Maybe like, they I, danced. Yeah. I, I don't even think that May was on these these episodes. Was she? I did really she help don't. with the hair? With setting the oh, hair? Oh, you're right. She wasn't. That, that was it. But there was barely a line. So yeah. So so that kind of got dropped. And then are they going to revive it? Because we have three episodes left, right? Ten, so eleven, weird. and twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Like this season yeah. is structured so strangely. <laughs> it's just <laughs> weird. Like what is going on? I know each each week I'm like, oh, this is good. But then I'm like, are we still just kind of spinning our wheels here? But it still makes me feel yeah. like things are happening. But then when you look back, they haven't really. So Yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. this is maybe a little bit affected by the strikes a little bit, or I have yeah. no idea when this was filmed. But it just seems yeah. like it's very strange how it's all been put together. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, we'll see. I guess the next uh, we have two recaps left. And we'll do mm -hmm. for, uh, and I was thinking at first that there were only 10 episodes because that's what Heartland is, is only 10. So yeah. Like, it, I was thinking like, that next week was the finale and then oh, that doesn't make any sense, but it's, there's actually 12. Yeah. 12 we, episodes, have some, so we're good. we have some more time to have nothing happen and then a lot happen. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Uh, the preview for next week shows a visit to the prison, a, a hand holding kind of mm -hmm. right yeah in the hayloft. Yeah. <laughs> hayloft i'm very very curious for next uh, week and this is what. a total nitpick personal preference i really hate this coral color they keep putting elizabeth in i think it is oh yeah it's obviously a beautiful woman but it, this and particularly in episode eight she had this pink dress with flowers on i really didn't like that it. that was an interesting choice i hadn't seen that one on her Usually yeah. she's in like blues, you know, or like yeah. uh, white, white blouses. <laughs> yeah. I kept looking at like, the uh, dress. I was like, oh, that's a different dress. I just think that that like coral orangey pink color is like. Well, and then she flashes because. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> Rosemary's always in like magenta or yeah, bright, bright red. Bright and colors. then they're like together and you're like, oh, that clashes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No singing Daisy uh, Daisy in a duet for those yeah. two. <laughs> Daisy Daisy. <laughs> Let us know what you think of these episodes. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Your conspiracy. Who do you think it is? Yeah. Do you think it's this Amos guy from way back? I guess he was in season six. Caroline was saying. Uh, so yeah oh, i uh, is it? you know we'll see but uh let us know your theories in the comments section or on twitter and mary where can people find you i'm at underscore mary richards on twitter mary richards reports on instagram and reporter mary richards on facebook great and you can find me at rachel's reviews all over social media itunes youtube and on rotten tomatoes so check that out also make sure you're following the podcast hallmarkies pod and hallmarkies podcast all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really, really helps us a lot. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. And uh, check out the patron group and merch store. We've got tons of Hardy's inspired merchants, including some new designs. So take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.